Hello everyone, welcome to another video on congruence and we're going to look at some GCSE style questions now on this, on this particular topic. So here I've got a typical GCSE question and it's worth three marks and it says ABCD, so this shape here is a parallelogram, so let's just highlight the word parallelogram and we need to prove that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle BCD. Now, first of all, let's draw in our triangles. So triangle ABC. So this is our triangle ABC, and we need to prove that this triangle is congruent to BCD. So I'm just gonna draw another triangle here that goes from B to C to D. Now, whenever we're giving statements about um, any side lengths or any angles, we also need to give a reason as to why that's true. So I always like to break my page up into two columns. So the first column, I'm going to write a statement down. So I'm going to write a statement down. And then in this column, I'm going to give the reason as to why that statement is true. Now, the first thing I can see here is that this length here, AC, that is exactly the same length as this length here, BD. So I can say that AC equals BD. And how did I know that? Well, it, tell, it tells us in the question that ABCD is a parallelogram. So we know that opposite sides of a parallelogram are equal. So that's going to be our reason. So at the moment, we found one pair of corresponding lengths that are equal. Now remember, whenever we're trying to prove things are congruent, we need at least three statements. So the next statement I can see that I'm going to give is that this length here, AB, well, that is the same as length CD, and it's for exactly the same reasons. So we know the opposite lengths in a parallelogram are equal, so these two lengths must also be equal. Now, so far we've found two pairs of corresponding side lengths that are equal. So we just need one more thing to complete our proof. And I can see that this length here, length BC, so length BC, well, that is part of both triangles. So we can see that it's part of the blue triangle and it's also part of the red triangle. So BC equals BC. It quite, seems quite obvious, but we need to write it down anyway. So why do these two things equal each other? Well, it is the same line. And now we found three corresponding side lengths that are equal to each other. Therefore, we have proven that these two triangles are congruent. So we just need to write a final concluding remark. So we can say that triangle... A, B, C is congruent, this is the symbol for congruent, is congruent to triangle B, C, D, and that is by S, 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 so side, side, side. So we've used the S, S, X axiom to prove that these two triangles are congruent. Okay, so we've got another question here uh, on the same topic. So it says ABCD is a parallelogram again, just like the previous question. E is the point where the diagonals AD and BC meet, which we can see on the diagram here. And uh, we need to prove that triangle ACE, triangle ACE, is congruent to triangle BDE. So I encourage you to pause the video first and see if you can have a go at doing this yourself. Okay, so I'm assuming you've paused the video and had a go, so let's go through this together. So first of all, what two triangles are we trying to prove are congruent? That's the most important part. So ACE, so that's this triangle here, ACE, so I'm just going to outline this. And the other triangle is triangle BDE, so BDE is this one here. And it looks like we formed a nice bow tie here. So uh, what can we see first of all? Well, the first thing I can see is that these two lengths here are congruent. So we can say that AC is equal to BD. And this is exactly the same reason from the last question is that opposite side lengths in a parallelogram are equal. Now, so far we've got one pair of corresponding sides that are equal. I can also see that this angle here, so angle CAE, well, that is equal to this angle angle BDE. Now, how do I know that? Well, you should, um, you should know these types of angles. These are called alternate angles, and we know that alternate angles are equal. So we can say our statement is going to be 
angle CAE is equal to angle BDE. And our reason is because alternate angles are equal. And we can just apply the same logic for this angle here and this angle up here. So these two angles are also alternate angles and therefore they must also be equal. And now we've got three bits of information. Do we have the required information we can use to prove that these two triangles are congruent? Well, we've got ASA, ASA. And remember, ASA is one of our congruency axioms. So yes, we do. So we can say that triangle ACE is congruent to triangle BDE, and that would be by ASA, so by angle, side, angle, and we are done. Okay, I'm going to go through one more question, and again, pause the video and see if you can uh, have a go uh, at this one first. Okay, so ABC is a triangle, CDEF is a parallelogram such that D is the midpoint of AC, so this is the midpoint of this length, and E is the midpoint of AB, so E is the midpoint of this length here. We're also told that F is the midpoint of BC, this length at the bottom, and we need to prove that triangle ADE is congruent to triangle BEF. So again, the first thing, what two triangles are we trying to prove are congruent? So I've just outlined the two triangles here in red and blue just to make things a lot clearer. And now I'm going to do my grid, so my uh, statement and my reasons. So what information do we know? Well, this length here is the same as this length. Now, the reason I know that is because here, if I just asterisk it, we're told that E is the midpoint of AB. So this is the midpoint of this length. So we've basically cut it in half. So AE must be equal to EB. And our reason will be because E is the midpoint of AB. So what other information uh, are we told? Well, we're also told, so if we focus on this line here, D is the midpoint of AC. So we know that this length here is exactly the same as this length. So we can say that um, AD equals DC. And the reason for this is because, again, D is the midpoint of AC. Now you might be thinking, well, what good was that? I don't need to know this length. However, this length here, I can now see that this length is equal to this length because this shape here is a parallelogram. So we can say that DC is equal to EF. And the reason for that is because opposite sides in a parallelogram are equal. And now with both of these bits of information combined, we can now say that AD equals EF. And the reason for that is because they both equal DC. Both of these lengths are both equal to DC. And now I can apply exactly the same logic to prove that this length here, DE, is equal to FB. So first of all, let's focus on this length here, CF. Well, I know that's the same as this length, FB, because of this reason here, because F is the midpoint. And now, because this is a parallelogram, I know that DE is equal to CF. And my reason, again, is because opposite sides in a parallelogram are equal. And now, because of these two bits of information, I can now say that DE is equal to FB. And the reason for that is because both of these lengths are equal to CF. And now we can see that these two triangles have the same corresponding side lengths, therefore they must be congruent through SSS. So the first one we uh, found was that AE was equal to EB, so I'm just going to write 1 here. The second one we found was AD was equal to EF, that was over here. And the third one was DE equals FB, which was this one here. So our concluding statement, we can say that triangle... ADE is congruent to triangle BEF, and that is by side, side, side. Now, I know you might be thinking that this is an awful lot of effort to, um, to prove that two triangles are congruent, but you need to include these reasons. It's really important. Otherwise, you will not get full marks. Okay, so just to summarize, whenever you're trying to prove that two triangles are congruent, 
Firstly, you need to identify the corresponding side lengths that are equal or the corresponding angles. And then for each statement you give, you need to provide the reason. And once you've got three of them that make up one of our congruency axioms, so in this case, SSS, then you have enough information to prove that they are congruent and you just need to finish off with a concluding statement. So hopefully you found that useful and hopefully I will see you in the next video. Take care.